Hello and welcome. We are streaming um, the ABC Murders. This is a murder mystery based on um, the Agatha Christie novel of the same name. Um, this is the first time I've played a game from this particular studio. It is likely that I won't complete this in a single session. It looks like it's a fairly long game. Um, and we'll see how we go. Um, I have read all the Agatha Christie novels uh, at least once. In fact, I did a read through once where I read every novel in alphabetical order. Um, not the best way of doing it, but I had just gotten an e-reader and at that point had not worked out how to do uh, sorting by other criteria on the device and it was the easiest way to keep track of where I was up to. Um, I have also seen this particular story in the David Suchet um, Perot series, which we've watched about two thirds of. Um, and while looking up the date of this novel, I found out that the BBC also did a special starring John Malkovich playing Hercule Perot um, that was a mini series of this novel in particular. Um, so it's not an unknown story and I do know a fair bit of the solution, so we'll see how we go. Um, looking at the interface, it looks like we score ego points, which I'm guessing is linked to how well you get things correct, and there is a progress score of how far through the game you get. So, let's start. Fresh game, I haven't looked at this before. Some objects in your inventory. So that'll be Hoku and uh, Captain Hastings, who's uh, offsider at this point in the history. Some post for you, Poirot. Mr. Hercule Poirot, you fancy yourself, don't you, at solving mysteries that are too difficult for our poor thick head British police? Let us see, Mr. Clever Poirot, just how clever you can be. Perhaps you'll find this nut too hard to crack. Look out for Endover on the 21st of the month. Yours extra, A, B, C. Ah, oh, it's some sort of joke. Maybe, but please remind me to inform Chief Inspector Jap. So, uh, it wouldn't be extra, it would be etc. Um, this game was originally um, produced in French and has been translated and had an audio track uh, dubbed in in English. Um, I will see as I go along how much of uh, spoilers I will give because I do know the significance of the ABC and the Andover um, already, but we'll see how we go. This, I believe, is going to be a bit of a point and click mystery. Um, where we have to find the items and the clues on screen and use them to solve stuff. As I said, I haven't played anything by this particular studio before, so I don't know how the interface works. <coughs> so, if you don't know... It's here, Poirot. The murder took place in this street. Grim place indeed. If you don't know about Hercule Perot, are in a terrible state. Look, there's Chief Inspector Jap. He's talking with a policeman. Let us try not to get our shoes wet. So Jap works for um, CID, I believe, or Scotland Yard, one or the other. I think it's CID, London Police. Um, uh, Hercule Perot was a Belgian police officer. He was originally, I believe, a farmer, and he. Um, was injured during the First World War. This this particular novel is set between the First and Second World War. Um, after, after the war, he was a policeman in Belgium and then uh, ended up in England recovering after the war from injuries um, and became a private detective in the UK. Click on a zone in the scenery to go there. When the cursor changes, keep holding the click and move the cursor in the desired action, to the desired action. So we want to go see, let's have a look at, at this the police and officer. vegetable shop has a front row seat, therefore an employee might have noticed something. 
Okay, that refers obviously to that. Oh, we had a mouse one away. Uh, that is Jap. Oh, that's Jap or Poro? That's Hastings. That's Jap. Over here, it's Hastings and Poro. You missed the nine o'clock train? We took the half past ten. Luckily, the service is good to Andover. So, Chief Inspector, what do we have? The victim is called Alice Asher. She owned this tobacco shop. She was killed yesterday with a blow to the back of the head. At what time? Let me just check. So all the information we have is in the notebook somewhere. So we can observe. Is Jap being too relaxed? Let us find the clues that prove it. Okay. Relaxed attitude. Indeed, Poirot. We were used to seeing you judge people with more discretion. That's fine. Looks like he has something in his pockets, but I'm not finding it. Hat tipped proudly on the back of the head. Okay, so we found all three. Jab is in a good mood. I bet he thinks he's already called the culprit. The last customer to see Mrs. Asher alive left her shop at half past five. The body was found at around eleven in the evening by an officer doing his rounds. The shop door was open. That's what alerted him. Had anything been taken? A little tobacco, maybe, but you'd hardly murder for a few smokes. There's nothing of any real value in the shop. What type of woman was Mrs. Asher? In her fifties. Married, but separated. No children. A husband? Aha, uh -huh. Franz Sasha, the husband. Alcoholic and violent. It's said that he regularly insulted his wife and threatened to kill her. Do you think he's guilty? We'll look for Franz Asher. If he doesn't have an alibi, the case is closed. A very unoriginal murder. But that. May I examine the crime scene? Of course, old chap. I'll be with you in a minute, Poirot. So click on the arrow in the bottom right hand corner of the screen to display the menu items in inventory. So we can have a look there and see uh, that is inspect the crime scene is the next objective. All right. With the notebook, things we know so far. She's about 50 years old in Andover. We have the victim. Uh, so, a clue, for those of you not familiar with the story, is Alice Asher in Andover. Is theft the motive for the crime? Okay, the little grey cells. This is in intended to uh, tell you uh, that they're synapses. So we'll have a quick look at the. This fruit and vegetable shop has a front row seat. Therefore, an employee might have noticed something. That mouse is running around again. Right, we have the crime scene. She has a packet of play cigarette next to her hand. Did she drop it when she fell? This poor woman's head is resting in a very even-shaped pool of blood. Hmm, the body is hidden by the counter and is not visible from the tobacco shop store. 
many customers might have thought that Mrs. Asher had popped out. I can't see any other mark on the floor. This poor woman's head is resting in a very even-shaped pool of blood. There is another clue here to be found. Hmm. The body is hidden That's by the counter what, uh, and is not to... visible from I'm the tobacco shop store. wondering what is in her hand. Many customers might have thought that Mrs. Asher had popped out. Hmm. The body is hidden by the counter and is not visible from the tobacco shop store. Many customers might have thought that Mrs. Asher had popped out. She just has one wound on the back of the head. There are no other wounds or signs of a struggle. Okay. It's not just any. It's so open got... at the letter A. So the ABC there guide no for people who board. haven't, uh, who aren't British, which I'm not, but I've read an awful lot of British um, novels over the years. Um, it was basically the railway timetable to get anywhere in the UK. So it had for every, basically every station um trains that came through um arrived at or left from that particular station and you could look up by station trains coming to and from and what line they were um and this will become significant in the plot of the story red liquid is oozing out is it blood no it's just some strawberries that are losing their juice. They probably come from the fruit and vegetable shop opposite. There's something else here that is worth inspecting. Because we've only found two of the three. There are lots of handprints on the counter. The counter is covered with fingerprints all on top of one another. Unfortunately, it will not be possible to use them. All right, that's all three clues from that location. The door is locked. The door is locked. There are cigarettes packets in a mess on the shelf. His movement is very strange. There are cigarettes packets in a mess. Alright. The place is unusually tidy for a crime scene.
nothing suggests any sign of a fight. That suggests we're done with this room. So, Poirot, any news? So, I never see guide with no fingerprints, but prints all over the counter. Normally, the tobacco shop does not sell ABC guides. Exactly. <coughs> hey, mommy, could you have a word with the neighbors? <coughs> some may have seen something. <coughs> of course, my friend, I'll do it straight away. Uh, just give me a sec, I've just noticed that my uh, screen is not scaled properly and you may not be seeing everything, so bear with me a second while we rescale that. This is what happens when every Steam game does something slightly differently. That should give you the full screen. All right, that is better. Let's jump back to that. All right. So let's uh, let's go into the fruit and veg shop and see what's going on here. So, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Asher was killed here. The absence of marks in the shop and the regular shape of the blood stains indicated beyond a doubt. Okay. deliberately left behind this ABC as a signature. The absence of fingerprints and the fact that it is open at letter A for Endover leaves little doubt. Oh, got some ego points. <sighs> All right, so is theft the motive for the crime? We're missing something. Alright, let's go. This fruit and vegetable shop has a front row seat, therefore an employee might have noticed something. Place is run down. Hmm. That might explain all the noise.
This is a really cutthroat neighborhood. Anyone could have committed the crime. Oh, I don't want to look there again. I want to look... The door is locked. I need to go in there somehow. Uh, hang on. Let's have a look at the till. Observe the object from all angles by holding the click and moving the mouse. Zoom in by clicking on part of the object with the left button, zooming out with the right button. Click on the arrow or click on the arrow icon. Some eye elements move by holding the left click on the mouse and moving it. The teal does not appear to have been touched. Something is preventing the drawer from opening. mechanism as to the till is full of money but there is something strange something is hidden underneath something is hidden underneath So we did the code. This must be the key to the back of the shop. Where we found the numbers written on the till on different sides. All right. So we know that there was money still in the till. Therefore, the robbery was not. Uh, what have I got in my inventory? Clunky user interface, but let's see how we go. We got 10 ego points. <laughs> we are egotistical. Indeed, indeed. Seth, motive for the crime. Now, we should have... Okay. The motive is definitely not financial gain. There is no sign of a struggle, and the till has not been forced or emptied. Is our next question. We've answered all three of those. Okay. All right. Inspect her bedroom. Hmm. There's blood on the bed. Maybe she was killed here. Did Alice Asher suffer from nosebleeds? An inscription in German. Souvenir of our honeymoon in the Black Forest. 
to my Alice forever, Franz Sasha. The Ashes were a lovely couple when they were young. Blood. What a strange box. It looks like you have to slide the slats of wood to open it. This button appears to activate the mechanism. That should do it. A necklace of bright blue stones. Who is this young woman? To my dear Aunt Alice. Marie Drauer. Have you found anything? The victim has a niece. We must find her. Is there anything else in this room we need to look at? This interior is very simple. So what this teaches us. Mrs. Asher lived very simply. Okay. That is all. She lived simply. He's twirling his moustaches because he is known for um, his vanity both his little grey cells and his moustaches. So, what have we got to know now? She has a niece. A victim. We have a suspect. So we have two things. Another cabinet. Oh, another puzzle.
These drawings appear to be attached to the chest of drawers. They won't move. It is blocked by something. Such a pretty decoration should be at the center of the motif to respect the I heard a faint sound, as if something was unlocked. So, can we access these now? These drawings appear to be attached to the chest of drawers. Hoping the order of these isn't important.
Let's now look at the top. These drawings appear to be attached to the chest of drawers. Hmm. Hmm, it is blocked. These drawings appear to be attached to the chest of drawers. They will These drawings appear to be. So this, I'm trying to work out if I have to match them. So that one is the right way up. Okay, we unlocked it. That was complicated. All right, so what do we have in the chest? We have two things to observe. So, laudanum. Laudanum based cough medicine, Mrs. Hasher, and Dover Morley Laboratory, London. So, laudanum it's is to find an opiate. Such an elaborate medicine from a leading London laboratory in the home of such a modest woman. Um, women commonly used laudanum <coughs> to self treat both pain and depression. <coughs> and it was generally available over the counter as opposed to today. Right way up when they were in the cabinet. From Mr. Adam Flint, Royal Bank, Eastfield Road, Andover, to Mrs. Alice Asher, 5 Bishops Road, Andover. Dear Mrs. Asher, to hazard to your request of 12 February 1935, I have informed my superiors of your wish to apply for a loan to acquire the lease of the shop you rent from Mr. Fairfax. <coughs> Despite the seriousness of your case, I regret to inform you that your request has been denied. The amount of your personal contribution, £11, is not high enough and represents too small a part of the final transaction. I remain at your disposal for any questions. Adam Flint Mrs. Asher's meagre savings were not enough for her to own the tobacco shop, but will largely cover her funeral costs. I think I've looked everywhere here. Let us see if I can find any more information in the shop's surroundings. Okay, well that sounds like he's uh, he's done here. So 
not exactly quick to move around. So the fruit and veggie and shop is set up now. This woman appears to be a smoker. Yeah, indeed she does. She probably buys things from the tobacconists on a regular basis. She's a big smoker. She must have been a customer at the tobacco shop. Oof, the anatomy is terrible. <laughs> that is not how hips move. Did you know Alice Asher well? And for starters, who are you? I'm Hercule Poirot, the detective. You're foreign, that's for sure, with your accent and your odd way about you. And you're here about Alice's murder, I suppose. Well, I've nothing to say to you. Oh, that didn't go Did well. you speak to the victim yesterday? No, I never saw her. Please try and help me, madame. Why should I help you? For your beautiful moustache? <laughs> Come on, move along now. You're scaring away my customers. Please, do not be ridiculous. I know that Alice Asher bought strawberries from you yesterday. Well, you know more than I do, then. Run along now. I have work to do. She's not very helpful, is she? A bottle of poor quality vinegar. The smell could awaken the dead. Oh, you again? I've nothing to say. Didn't bode well. Strawberries, sixpence a pound. Hey, Poirot. Wow. Is the greengrocer causing trouble? I'll sort her out. No, please, leave her, Chief Inspector. I'll get her to talk later. I've found the victim's niece. She's waiting for you in the back of the shop. Thank you, mon ami. I'll question her. The murderer probably pretended to be a customer. He hid the shopkeeper from behind as she turned around to serve him. Jap had the body removed out of respect for the victim's niece. His attention is commendable. He 
these are grief sincere. She appears to be very upset. She's dressed in mourning. She looks fragile. So Perot used to um, like to um, try and solve things as much as he could without having to go out and about too much. He would observe things, but he didn't sort of like do a lot of clue hunting as such. He would interrogate people and ask for their observations. You are very fond of your aunt, am I right? And she was make... the only family I had since my mother died. Your aunt did not have any children, is that correct? No. She was separated from her husband. What do you think about Franz Asher, your aunt's husband? He never left her alone. Poor aunt. She used to drop by all the time and make a scene. Was your aunt afraid of her husband? He shouted a lot, but she wasn't afraid of him. Why, he used to slink away when she turned on him. He was afraid of her, if you like. Did your aunt enjoy good S? She had a bad throat, but she was well cared for by a doctor in London. Does Franz Asher work? All he's done for years is drink and gamble, but he used to be a very good cabinet maker. Where does he live on? My aunt used to give him five shillings a week. Why did she support such a goods for nothing? He was her husband. She couldn't leave him with nothing. I understand. You have been of great assistance, mademoiselle. Please take this young lady home. My pleasure. Well, this Franz Asher does not seem to be quite so dangerous as Jeff said. And since Alice Asher gave him money regularly, it was not in his interest to kill her. All right, let's uh, see if we can find, uh, find a way to get the fruit and veg lady to talk to me. Because I suspect she can tell me what time she, either the strawberries were bought or that she went into the shop. Oh, there's Franz. We have to wait for him to sleep it off. He's all yours, Poro. There are a few things I need to check. That must be some way of sobering him up. I wonder what his wife used to do. He must have scared the customers away. He's not in any condition to be questioned. I have to find a way to sober him up. There are cigarettes packets in a mess on the shelf. It's Ali Sasha's notebook. Ah, that's interesting. Bodley. The fruit seller has debts too. She will probably be more cooperative thanks to this piece of information. Mary Drower was telling the truth. Mrs. Asher regularly gave money to her alcoholic husband. Hmm. A box of new stockings. So I believe the reason the stockings are important, I'm trying to decide how much of a spoiler to give. Um, the stockings were left by the murderer, who 
who used sale of the stockings as a reason to uh, visit. Nothing suggests any sign of a fight. To get into conversation. He was a travelling salesman. So let's see if we can get some water from the back room and toss it in his face. Mrs. Asher lived very simply. Going to adjust my moustaches again. Um, has Mrs. Asher lived very simply. Mrs. Asher lived very simply. All right, that's not the answer. Obviously, it has to be something I haven't looked at already. There are cigarettes packets in a mess on the shelf. <laughs> that will do the job. A bottle of poor quality vinegar. The smell could awaken the dead. Your fruit is rotten. What? A foreigner dares to say that? According to the victim's account book, you owed her ten pounds for tobacco and magazines. That's a lie. She owed me one pound. I swear. Now, please be so kind as to explain this. Look at my account book. Alice owed me eleven pounds for fruit and vegetables. I may have had a slate at her shop, but she had one at mine. She owed me one pound, and that reminds me I have to get it back from her niece. That is quite enough. Your account book has saved you, but I might ask Chief Inspector Jap to throw you in the cells for one or two nights while he checks your entries. You want to go to prison? Prison? Now that's not fair. I haven't done nothing. In that case, I am counting on your full collaboration. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. Listen, I didn't kill Alice, I swear. But it's true that I did go to the shop yesterday. At what time? Six o'clock. She left me a note saying she wanted some strawberries if I got some. I received them late, about six. So I took them over to her. But you did not see her. She wasn't in the shop, so I just put the strawberries on the counter and left. Did you see anything unusual in the shop? No. Well, maybe one thing. There was a railway guide on the counter. Alice didn't sell them. Maybe it's the customer who left it there. You were not allowed? I thought Alice had just gone to get her medicine from her room and that she'd be straight back. You mentioned medicine. Something for her cough. She used to take it a lot. Who do you think killed her? France. Her scoundrel of her husband. He was always after her for something. Well, he's a foreigner. Uh, sorry, sir. What I mean is he's German. That's even worse. Did you see Franz Asher enter the tobacco shop late yesterday afternoon? Well, no. But at that time of the day, the streets are packed, and I have better things to do than watch her shop. I'll just borrow your bottle a moment. Take it. It's what Alice used to sober up her husband. But try not to empty the bottle. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work.
All right, let's see what we get. Let's use the vinegar on Mr. Asher. He's not in any condition to be questioned. I have to find a way to sober him up. Yeah, I have a way to sober him up. Mes amis, I can say without a doubt that poor Mrs. Asher was killed between half past five and six. Killed when the street was packed with people. That's rather bold. I've been talking to the neighbours and... No one's seen anything? Or rather it's anything and everything? Am I wrong? <sighs> no. Yeah. We must grill this villain Asher <coughs> before he falls asleep again. So we'll observe him first so that we this can see what's going on. Broken lip. Yeah, broken lip. Black eye. Torn jacket. So he's been in a fight. This man has been fighting and he smells of alcohol. Care for a cigarette, monsieur. What's that? Scented cigarettes? No thanks. Bien. I was trying to be friendly, but you are quite right. Let us get down to business. You threatened to kill your wife, and now she's dead. So what? You shouldn't take things so seriously, sir. Nothing but empty threats. We didn't get on all that badly. So, if things were going so well with your wife, why did you not live with her? She was the one that left. Nothing to do with me, sir. Ah, women are flighty critters. Did she run away with another man? Flighty? You talk funny. One thing for sure, if my wife was seeing another man, I'd have given her a good beating. Interesting. And what were you doing yesterday at the end of the afternoon? Can't recall. You had been drinking again. <laughs> the occasional slap, sir. That's all. And you cannot even remember how you ripped the coat? I got it stuck in the door. Asha, look me in the eye and tell me that you were in a fight. I'm looking. I'm looking. No, I wasn't in a fight. You are right. Looking at the state of you, you did not defend yourself. So someone gave you a good beating. A beating? No way. All right, he tore my coat and gave me a black eye. Did you see the state of him? Very interesting. Who is the other that you struck? Probably best if I tell you everything. Yesterday afternoon, I met Roderick Tanner. We'd bet on a dog fight together. An illegal bet, naturally. Yes, sir. Our dog won. Roderick got the money, but he refused to give me my share. And you thought about it. What time was this? In the evening, about six, I think. We were on the other side of town. You see, I couldn't have killed my wife. How does he know that he, his wife was killed at six? Asher's alibi appears to be confirmed. All the same, I'm going to call and check that he did have a fight with this Tanner on the afternoon of the murder. You can never trust this sort of chap. One thing is certain, Asher was a ruffian who used to beat his wife. But he's not very educated. It certainly was not him who wrote the letter signed ABC. Let's resume these things. That's you know um, pretended to be a customer. A fairly a for money, but bigoted a assumption. Subject. These days, there's plenty point. of wealthy p and Engine educated Oliver, people who are abusers, so uh, <laughs> that Indeed, in and of itself is not an indicator that he wouldn't it. have killed his wife. You are quite right. Why he did it is a mystery. 
but as for how he did it, we do know enough to try and reconstruct the events. I would, however, suggest that uh, Asher wouldn't have been conceited enough to uh, send the letter to Poirot in advance. The killer enters the shop. Mrs. Asher turns around to greet a customer. The murderer asks her for some tobacco. She turns her back to him. He seizes the opportunity to strike her. He then places the ABC upside down before leaving. Everything appears to match the crime scene, mon cher Hastings. That is exactly what happened. Okay, we have successfully reconstructed the scene. The, the scene of the crime. Asher has a strong alibi and we don't have any other suspect. But what was the point of this crime? She had no debts. She gave Franz Asher money regularly. She wasn't owed money. Nobody stood to gain anything. No doubt about it. The murderer is insane. Hmm. And I fear that we had not heard the last of him. Indeed not. I hope you're wrong for once. Bien. Let's go back to London. If we hurry, we should catch the two past seven train. Are you coming? No. Unfortunately, I have to talk with Andover police. See you soon, then. Are you coming, Hastings? Let's go home. There's nothing for us here. So that's A is for Andover. Well, do you have any idea about the killer's identity? Hmm. The crime was committed by a man of medium height, with red hair and suspicious eyes. He has a slight limp on the right foot and a wart just below his shoulder blade. Poirot! Mon ami, what do you want? You fix upon me a look of dog-like devotion and demand of me a pronouncement à la Sherlock Holmes. Now for the truth. I do not know what the murderer looks like, nor where he lives, nor how to set hands upon him. What shall we do, then? Wait. Nothing. Nothing? Do not be so impatient, Hastings. The killer will manifest himself soon enough. I thought I heard the postman. Maybe there's some news. I would go and see. The uh, alligator was a present from Hastings to Poirot in the uh, Suchet TV series. Well, it's not actually an alligator, it's a, a caiman from uh, South America, I think. Hastings was an army captain who used to uh, travel around a lot and is not known to be especially clever, but he is dogged and loyal. So... That he has that going for him. Calendar on the wall. A few things to see. I don't know why they keep giving us the, uh, the letters upside what down. Do you think? I believe that I won this round. The end of her affair went like clockwork, don't you feel? But the fun has only just started. I would like to draw your attention to Bexil on Sea on the 25th of this month. We're having a crazy time. Best wishes, ABC. The next crime will be in Bexil. We must warn Jap to Scotland Yard. All right. Did the letter indicate anything that might help the police? To be honest, I think we can already guess something about the next victim. But I need to think about it a little more. I'm going to pause there um, and take a break and have something to eat. But uh, thank you for watching so far. We will come back to this in a moment or, <laughs> or an hour or so. Um, I expect this will be played over multiple sessions. As you can probably guess from the ABC, there are three murders, I believe, in the book. 
before the murderer is caught, but we'll see how it goes. So I'm guessing I'm about a third to a quarter of the way through the game. But uh, we'll see how it plays out.